Romans and Scots. Walls, roads, places. Post-industrial. I took three days to tour Scotland in a rented car. Covered roughly 620 miles, saw a Roman wall, a Scottish wall or two, Scottish castle, Pictish carvings, and Neolithic stone formations. Coupled with our earlier trip to the Falkirk Wheel, where I saw the other Roman wall, and my earlier trip to Vindolanda, my time in Scotland left me with more questions than answers. This isn't so much my answers as my thoughts about what I saw. According to the Vindolanda Trust, which maintains a museum at Vindolanda close to current day Hexham, Vindolanda was occupied by the Romans for over 300 years. The Romans were ahead of their time in a number of areas building roads, building bridges, conquering indigenous peoples, and military logistics. All of these are interconnected. If Caesar wants to invade some random country, he needs an army to go there. The army needs a supply chain, which is greatly assisted by good roads and bridges. They have a way saying at West Point, amateurs talk tactics, experts talk logistics, and the Romans were experts. However, the Romans didn't hold the land north of Hadrian's Wall for very long. They did hold land as far north as the Antonine Wall, but for a very short time. Instead, they pushed north, held the Scottish lowlands and borderlands for a short while, roughly 30 to 40 years according to historical markers, and retreated back to Hadrian's Wall. They did, however, hold the land up to Hadrian's Wall for quite some time. This got me thinking. How did they hold one part of Britain for 300 years, but just over 100 miles further north for only about a tenth of the time? They had the roads, the bridges, and the army. What changed? On my drive, I noticed a minor detail that didn't fully register at the time. I passed very few farms north of Glasgow. I was driving around mountains and locks and sheep ranches, but very few farms. The ones I did see were smaller than the ones I had seen further south. Smaller farms mean less food, which means larger supply lines for the Romans. A large army with all of its support groups requires a huge amount of food. The area between the two walls does contain many farms, but how much was needed to feed the military force protecting the supplies is likely there wasn't enough food to keep the Romans and their massive walls and forts supplied. At Vindolanda, they pointed out that Hadrian's Wall started as a turf wall with a ditch on the north side and a wooden wall at the crest of a turf berm. Over time, almost the entire wall, close to 80 miles long, was converted to a heavy stone wall with towers and forts. Antonine's wall was built out of turf and wood just as Hadrian's wall started. The Romans didn't hold Antonine's wall long enough to convert it to an imposing stone structure like Hadrian's wall. So what did the Scots, a general name for the communities and court cultures living north of Hadrian's wall, know that the Romans didn't. The Scots at the time fought the Romans. They were a strong enough military force to force the Romans, the superpower of the time, to build two walls to keep the Scots out. But the Scots didn't have the technology and logistics expertise that the Romans did. And the Romans couldn't get enough supplies out of the land to supply themselves, but the Scots could. I was wondering about this as I drove to one of the oldest stone castles in Scotland, Castle Sween. This castle sits at a narrow point towards the mouth of a sea lock out on a small peninsula. It had taken a great deal of work to get the needed stone out to that little spot to build a castle. Clearly, it was an extremely important place, or the resources and effort needed for a castle would have been spent elsewhere. Standing at the castle, I couldn't come up with a good reason to place it where it was. I looked at some mats after my trip. I was marking where I had been when I noticed something. Not far from Castle Sween, the very as a small valley full of Neolithic stone formations and some Pictish stone carvings. This spot was important enough for people to invest in thousands of years before the Romans. But when I was standing on the ground, I was at a loss as to why. Then I looked at the topographical map of the area. Castle Sween sits at a narrow point on the lock. At the head of the lock is a moderately sized area of flat land. Land that I recall as having farms on it. And the valley 15 miles away with the Neolithic stone formations and Pictish carvings was also a small area with farms. It was a rough road connecting them, Not, nothing like the Romans had, but a road all the same. The castle could easily have been placed to protect the rather sheltered sea lock and the farms. There are parallels between the Romans and a highly industrialized system, 
Look at how detailed and methodical the army was arranged, how well crafted the roads and bridges were. They had methods and systems and bureaucrats and logistics. I imagine that a Roman cohort could have taught Henry Ford a thing or two about efficiency on an assembly line. But all of that failed when they attempted to take Scotland. The post-industrial, in broad strokes, is a rethinking of the industrial. Finer strokes outline ideas of niche markets and more sustainable methods and using more flexible logistics. Many smaller, more refined factories across the world meet the demand. Instead of huge farms run by slaves and regimented methods, smaller, more localized, and organically managed farms feed the local areas. One castle could keep a fairly decent sized community defended instead of a massive wall. The places were important because of what could be done with them. The Romans may not have seen that. So they built massive walls that sucked enormous resources, resources the local land couldn't replenish. And when the first wall started to need more, they pushed north and built another wall. The Scots, on the other hand, didn't need a wall. And the Scots didn't mass themselves into huge groups that required long roads to supply. As a medieval project, Hadrian's Wall and Antonine's Wall may have actually failed because they were mega projects. Now again, this is not an answer, but a trace through some of the facts and my thoughts. I do not claim this is exactly what happened, or that I know everything needed to support my claims. But this trace does suggest that the Scots may have already been thinking post-industrial before there was industrial. The Romans thought in systems and regimentations, but the Scots functioned in as smaller, more responsive communities. It would be a stretch to say that the Scots started post-industrial thinking, but the methods they used to protect and control their land worked specifically because it didn't rely on a huge industrial machine. One castle versus an 80-mile stone wall with dozens of forts and watchtowers, each staffed by professional soldiers. People who built the castles still live here. The Romans don't.